What is sub D modeling? Today we find out. All right, what is sub D or subdivision modeling? So let's put a cube in the scene. So I'm clicking on the cube here and I'm going to isolate it. And Maya has something called a smooth mesh preview. And what that does is um, on the object you select, if you press three on the keyboard, Maya will show you what that would look like if it smoothed it out, if it add subdivisions and smoothed it out. And um, I'm just going to press one to go back and I'm going to duplicate this cube so you guys can see. On the second cube, I'm going to go up to mesh um, and I'm actually going to perform a smooth. So I'm going down here and I'm going to choose two to subdivision levels and click smooth. So here is the actual process where um, Maya has smoothed it out. And here is our original cube, pressing three to preview it. And if I drag the smooth cube over it, you can see that the silhouettes match. So um, that's the smooth mesh preview. You can actually change your um, preview level. So if you select your object, go into the attribute editor and under smooth mesh, you can see here that there's different levels. So if you drag this, that's at one level, two, three, four, you can go beyond four, but Maya will start slowing down. And you can also change this by the page up, page down hotkey. All right. And so now we know we can preview it. Why is that useful? Well, it's useful because when we change our components, we can kind of see the shape that it takes before we actually um, finalize it with a smooth action, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to press two on the keyboard so you guys can see. Um, this is the, it shows the cage of our original cube, but it also shows the smooth mesh preview. And I'm going to drag this edge um, a little bit forward and back, and you can see it morphing. Right? So it's a very organic process. Kind of control Z. Normally I just swap between one and three, but I was just showing you that you can see both. All right, so now let's learn how we can control that, um, the subdivision um, process. I'm gonna delete both these objects and I'm gonna put in a plane for us. All right, so here's our plane. Um, I don't need all these subdivisions, right? So I'm gonna press T to bring up the tool window and just drag that to one. And now I want to take this edge and I want to extrude it for this example, but I don't want to do it the normal way where we go into here and click extrude or use the marking menu. I'll show you a faster way. So I'm going to press a W to bring up the move tool. And if I hold down shift and drag, I can do something called a smart extrude. So it's just a very fast extrude. I'm going to go into object mode now and press three on the keyboard to see the preview. And you can see that Maya has smoothed this out, right? Pressing one to go back. So it's, it's taking this edge and this edge and it's finding um, the edge in the middle and it's performing some type of um, averaging and it's smoothing that shape. So to control the intensity of the smoothing, we need something called supporting edges. So right here is our structural edge, right? Um, actually all three are structural structural edges but right here is where the uh, curve is happening so if we add a cut there I'm going to use my multi cut tool and add a, add a cut right there and I'm going to press three now and you can see that curve has gotten a lot less I'm going to press one again and I'm going to um, go into edge mode and just select this edge and I'm going to go back into our, our preview and I'm going to move this edge away from the other edge. And as you see, the farther it gets from it, the rounder um, the curve gets, right? And when I bring it closer, the sharper it gets. I'm going to press one again. So having edges close to your structural edge like this um, really sharpens that corner. And what really um, defines it even more is having a second supporting edge. So I'm going to choose my multi-cut tool, add one here, press three, and you can see now um, that edge has a sharper corner, right? And yeah, so that's um, how you control a sub D 
mode. I'm going to delete this object and I'm going to um, show you a couple other examples. So I have a two cubes here and I'm going to bevel both of them. So the first one can perform my bevel and I'm going to reduce the fraction to 0.1. And then on the second cube, I'm still going to perform a bevel um, at 0.1, but I'm going to turn chamfer off. And now let's preview both of them. So I'm going to select both of them, press 3 on the keyboard, and you can see the difference. So the one with a normal bevel, right, turning off wireframe on shaded for a second, is much rounder than the one with the chamfer off. And even if I take this one and I reduce the fraction to something really small like 0 0.01, right, it never quite gets the edge that this one gets. So if I take this one and reduce this fraction to something really small, as I get smaller, um, you can see now the edge is much sharper, right? So that's um, a very important tip for when you're trying to define your form. I think the next step for us is just to delete these. I'm going to go out of isolation mode, turn back on our wireframe on shaded, and we'll uh, learn about sub D just by working with uh, some more objects. Okay, so the first thing I want to make is um, a door handle for the door, and that's an opportunity to use some sub D modeling there. So let's, uh, I'm going to make a cube and I'm going to isolate it. And I'm going to take this face and just bring it down to here. Bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to take this face and extrude this out. So I'm using um, the smart extrude, right? Just quickly extruding. I'm going to take this face and also extrude this out. So here's our door handle. And it looks all right. Now I want to um, smooth it. So I'm going to, uh, I don't want to smooth it, I want to preview. So I'm pressing the three on the keyboard. That's what it looks like. That's not going to work for me. So let's add some edges. And we can do it by adding some supporting edges, actually. So we'll go use the multi cut. And anywhere where it has an edge, I need a supporting edge. So if I put one here, press three, you can see that that form is starting to hold. I can put one here, one here, one here, 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 I'm saying here a lot, pressing three, and it's missing one right here and here. Here we go. And just like that, we have pretty much all the edges we need to hold this form, but also give it a little of a bit of a round look for um, the shape we want, right? So I added a couple more edges there. And it starts around round here because I don't have an edge here, right? And what I can do is, since I'm not going to see this side of the mesh, I can just delete that face. So a quick way to delete that face is select all these faces and then shift select this so I unselect that and then I can press delete and now when I smooth this or preview it, that side holds and it doesn't collapse on itself. Yeah, so just like that we have our door handle. I'm gonna go out of isolation mode, scale this down and then I'm gonna go into top view, pressing space Go into here, and here's our door. And I'm going to scale that down. Um, let's go back to here. We just put this into the door. And now we have a way to access our room. And door handles usually set about right the midpoint. I can make it a little bit bigger than normal. It's a miniature, so it won't look too odd. There we go. And we have a door handle.
It adds more to the believability of it. And the next thing I think we should work on is this um, sofa. So the sofa, let's start over and so that I can show you um, the symmetry mode as well. So I'm going to delete the sofa. I'm going to add a cube in. And I'm going to isolate it. So let's bring back our sofa form. Here you go. Symmetry works a bit better when I have a cut in the middle. So I'm going to use the multi-cut to put a cut in the middle. I'm holding down control and middle mouse clicking. So there's my cut. And now I want to extrude up some armrests and um, um, and then extrude up the back, right? So I'm going to put a cut here, but I need, I want to turn on symmetry. So when you're modeling, if you can do things in less steps, but still get the same results, um, obviously it's going to be way faster. So I'm going to turn on symmetry and here are my symmetry options. And in, if you look down here in our axis, X is going this way. So we can turn on object X or world X in this case. So I'm just going to choose object X. And then when I lay down my cuts, you can see that it's going to lay down a cut on the other side. So I'm going to click somewhere around here. And I want to lay a cut here. And there's something that can happen when you're in symmetry mode um, using the multi-cut tool or the insert edge loop tool. Sometimes it gets confused and it, it starts putting cuts in weird places and you'll have to fix it. So in this case, um, it hasn't done that. But when I was practicing earlier, it was doing weird stuff. So now let's extrude. So we can select this one. And because it's um, um, symmetry is on, we only have to select these, right? And it knows to select the other side. I accidentally select this back face, so I'm going to select that. And let's do our smart extrude again, pressing the W key, holding down shift, and dragging up. So now we have some uh, armrests. And then I want to unselect these ones. So I'm going to select that to unselect it. And I just realized I selected the edge. That means I'm in multi-component mode, and I don't want that. I'm going to go back to just face mode. So, um, multi-component mode just allows you to select all three at once if you want. All right, so I'm going to hold down Shift, drag this up. And now we have a backrest for our sofa. I'm going to go back into object mode, and um, it's a little bit wide, so I'm going to scale it in. And then I'm going to press, press 3. So here's our smooth mesh preview. And you can see that um, it's starting to round out. It looks a little strange, maybe a little space age, but it's not really the look I'm going for, right? So I'm going to press 1 again. And I need to put on some supporting edges. And um, for fun, let's press 2 on the keyboards, uh, keyboard, I should say. And I'm going to go into my multi-cut tool just so you can see it in action, right? So here's my edge. I'm going to put one here, one here. And you can see that form um, sharpen, right? The edge becomes a little stronger. So I put here, and then that edge becomes stronger here. And I'm going to press 1 again to go um, into the, um, the regular mode. And you can see where I'm putting the edges, right? So I'm putting it here, here. Anywhere where there's a, a structural edge, I'm putting a supporting edge in. I'm also inspecting my uh, mesh because um, sometimes those cuts can be a little bit funny. But right now it's fine. So here we go. Let's go back to here. And let's start putting in the rest of these edges. So I need one over here. There's a structural edge right here. So I need one right here. I'll need one at the top there. And one here. Let's put one here, one here. And then press 3 to, to check it every once in a while to see what we're missing. So you can see it's starting to round out here. right? And that's how you learn about it as well. Just going between 1 and 3, I find. right? See what you're missing. So I can put one right here. I also know I'm missing one here, but press 3. We, we'll, we can see it, right? So it's starting to round right here. So I just need to put one right here. Because here's the first edge, and we just need one on the other side. Press 3 to preview it. And we're pretty much almost done. 
I don't know if you guys can see where we're missing, but we're missing an edge right here, All right? So um, I'm gonna put one there. And there we go, just like that, we have the base of our sofa. And I'm gonna go out of wireframe for a second. Um, and yeah, you can see now it, it's a little bit softer. You know, we're not gonna cut ourselves bumping into it. I also want to bring in, um, I think this is the parts a bit long. So I'm gonna go into vertex mode and just drag in these vertices. Right. Press one again. And yeah, so now we have our sofa and I think it could use some cushions. I'm gonna scale it in a little bit as well. And the easy way to make cushions is just with a cube. So for the purpose of this, I don't wanna make it too, too complicated. Just gonna scale this down. And remember earlier when we uh, beveled it with um, just the regular bevel and gave it that soft kind of um, corner or slightly more rounded corner, I think that we can do that with our cushion, right? So I'm gonna go into edge mode, select it, perform our bevel, right? And now we can press three to preview smooth. And I think that'll be okay for the cushion, right? So go into object mode and maybe just scale it up a little bit. Bring it over here, turn back on wireframe on shaded for a second. And we can put our cushion down. And keep in mind, um, this is just in preview mode, so it's not actually smoothed yet, right? And scale it up a little bit. And our sofa is a little bit wide for my taste still, so I'm gonna just bring it in. And then I'm gonna duplicate this, bring it over here, and then bring one to the other side as well. And then now that we have three, we can probably just take all three, just scale them up a bit. There we go. And now we need uh, some back cushions. So I, just, I can just duplicate these ones. So Control D, bring it up, and then I can rotate it. Um, gonna rotate like that. Right, maybe give it a little more rotation. Bring it up a bit more, and I'll just push those into there. There, and I'll just drag these ones, and just bring it out a little bit. And there's our sofa. So let's take a look at what it looks like um, without the wireframe. Yeah, and I think that will work for our room. Smooth out the, the sofa part as well. And then to um, finalize, this, finalize this smooth, um, we can um, go into here, press one again, right? And then we can just click the smooth button and that will smooth it. And now if we press one, we don't go back to that, the primitive shape we had. And we can do that for all of these as well. Oops, select that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And then we can go up to mesh and just click smooth. Right, that'll smooth it out. That's two subdivision levels. So even though it's smooth, you can change it because we have the history, right? There's still the history of it. So I don't need all this geometry. Um, at the distance we're viewing it at, I, I can bring up the tool key, the tool window, and set that to one. I think that's fine. And same with the cushions, right? So right now, these are all at um, two, right? I think one is fine. Um, unfortunately, um, it doesn't want to do them all at once. So what I can do is once I do one, I can, oops, I thought I could just repeat the last action, but since it's already smooth, it's smoothing it again. So I'll just go into here and manually change these all back to one. There we go. And now we can delete the history and we can also combine it into one object so that when we move it, it's all one object. Combine, then we can go out of um, our preview mode, right? And yeah, so now we just place it on the ground. Depending on whether you wanna give it some uh, feet, right? I'll leave that up to you guys. Right now it's there. 
and if we take a look at it, you can see how uh, much nicer it looks, right? Just having those little rounded edges. And yeah, so that's a couple examples of how to use a sub-D modeling, uh, the process of sub-D modeling. Alright, hopefully that gives you a better understanding of what sub-D mode is and how it can improve your modeling process. That's all we have for today. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one.